we're well on our way. Like I said, we've already done about uh, 7.6 million um, in, in loans, uh, completed loans um, here in Fort Worth Market. And those are really kind of the, the small loans. So now we're starting to see some of the larger projects come through the pipeline, those economic development loans, um, which you know can be anywhere from 10 to 40 million dollars. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and on this episode, we're highlighting a new program that aims to get more capital in the hands of entrepreneurs and business owners in underserved communities. My guest today is Christina Brooks, the Chief Equity Officer and the Director of the Diversity and Inclusion Department in the City of Fort Worth, and is the champion of the city's new CDFI friendly program. Announced in January 2022, this program provides flexible, patient CDFI financing and much needed lending assistance for Fort Worth's underrepresented communities, for residents who are buying a home or starting a business. Christina, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Thank you, welcome. So I just use a lot of acronyms. Let's define a few <laughs> terms to start. What does CDFI stand for? And what is CDFI America doing across the country? Yeah, so CDFI stands for Community Development Financial Institution. And uh, CDFI Friendly America is really on a mission to provide uh, access to about $2 billion from the CDFI industry to communities that have been unserved or underserved as far as access to capital. So you just defined the term for it, but what actually is a CDFI? Yeah, so um, it was actually the, the came out of um, uh, the religious community and seeing the needs that were in unserved uh, communities in, in cities across the United States, understanding that it was a little more difficult, they were having a little more challenge in accessing traditional lending markets like banks and, and, and credit unions. And so they came up with this idea that uh, where they would build this financial institution that wasn't regulated and didn't have the same kind of restrictions that financial uh, traditional financing institutions did, um, but had that flexibility to be able to work with um, some of the challenges that we would see in unserved communities and providing them access. So this is things like lack of credit, lack of collateral, things that a bank right. would normally want to take a look at, but in underserved communities, borrowers don't always have those sort of things. And, and I, I love that the word patient is in there because yes. <laughs> it takes a while to pay these back sometimes and sometimes traditional yeah. banks aren't willing to wait. Is, is, that all the yeah. right, is that the right way to think about it? Patient and flexible. Mm -hmm. And so usually traditional lenders uh, they want to see a, a financial history, right? They want to see um, um, uh, profit and loss statements. Right. And, and usually when you're uh, like an emerging business or you're just starting out, uh, you may not have all of that information. But what they concentrate more on with, with a CDFI is really cash flow understanding like you have money coming in, how much do you have coming in and when, and then they base their payment process on those issues instead of um, looking at what traditional lenders do based on regulatory requirements by the federal government. Makes sense. So how many CDFI friendly cities are there in the U.S. right now and is it, is it, is it expanding? It is expanding. So um, right now I think technically we are probably number three. Wow. But um, <laughs> it kind of exploded uh, <laughs> after word got out um, about uh, Fort Worth jumping into the CDFI friendly model market. And now I think uh, there are probably about seven more cities that are in the process of becoming CDFI friendly uh, in the United States. And you can go to the CDFI friendly America work. Uh, website to uh, check out which cities are coming, but I think I'm pretty sure Tulsa is is on that list, and Jacksonville, and a couple other cities across the United States that are jumping on board. Big cities, and, and did it start in South Bend? It started in Bloomington. Okay. It started in Bloomington, Indiana, and that was largely because 
the mayor of Bloomington, Indiana, came out of uh, the CDFI uh, financial community. So we already had like a working understanding of how um, CDFIs could benefit his community. And um, that's kind of where uh, the brainchild <laughs> was born. And he reached out to Mark Penske and Adina Abramowitz, who both uh, collectively probably have over 50 years of experience in, in uh, CDFI uh, community, and asked them like, hey, I have this idea. What if we um, try to collectively leverage all the CDFIs across the country and bring them either digitally or virtually into communities like uh, a small community like Bloomington to solve some of the ac capital access um, challenges. And what Mark will tell you is his first response was, that's a horrible idea. Like um, wow. it is, it's not gonna work. Yeah. And um, because typically when you're talking about bringing a CDFI to a community, it takes a tremendous amount of money, right? If you're gonna physically try to locate uh, a CDFI um, in a community. But this was different because we weren't necessarily talking about physically locating a CDFI. We wanted to connect them with opportunities for lending um, and they could do it from wherever they are. And what makes the CDFI model different is that you have a person or a, a group or a board that's there in the community that can make the connection to the CDFI regardless of where it is and um, keep track of things that are happening on the ground, right? So they understand like there's risk involved and, and uh, so to mitigate that, you want somebody on the ground that can kind of communicate back and forth with the CDFI uh, regardless of where they're located. And so um, they kicked off CDFI Friendly America uh, in Bloomington. And then um, uh, South Bend uh, was the second city to kind of uh, jump in the game. And we saw early on before they even finished um, setting up their program, um, we had caught wind of it through um, the Federal Reserve Bank of, of Chicago that, hey, this is uh, a good way for, for small communities to solve their capital access issues. Uh, and then we took off uh, with it and, and got it up and running in, in South Bend. And then I was uh, recruited to come down to Fort Worth. Um, and so when I, when I got here, um, you know, thinking about North Texas region, right? Uh, this is uh, Fort Worth, Dallas region. Notice that you I said, said it right. Oh, Fort we, Worth, we caught Dallas, that. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, but uh, when we we've trained you well, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> when, when you think about this area, you think about all some of the major traditional uh, financing institutions that are right here that call this region home, and so you wouldn't necessarily think that there are any issues with uh, you know, lending. And so when we started doing research, our department started doing research on um, you know, like what the major issues were, especially when it, as it pertains to uh, business equity firms, those that are African-American, Hispanic, Native, Indigenous, Asian, Pacific Islander, and women-owned businesses, what were the challenges they were having? And we were right on the cusp of concluding our um, uh, MWBE disparity study. And so a lot of that information- What's MWBE? Minority and Women Business Enterprise. Thank you. Yes, and so we were com concluding that disparity study. And so the findings were really similar to what we had seen when we did a similar study in, um, in, other, in, in South Bend. And, Capital to, access to capital was was right there on the list, and so I was like, "That's crazy, right? We can do something about that." And uh, picked up the phone and called Mark and uh, said, "Hey, I think we might be able to work together again, but this time in a big city." Um, and uh, we pulled together some research and and found out this was something that uh, could actually work and work really well here and. Here we are. 
So the main problem that this initiative is trying to solve is that Fort Worth is not currently getting its share of CDFI funding. And, right. and from the new website that you guys just launched uh, a few weeks ago, showed that Fort Worth only received $39 of financing yeah. per person, which that doesn't mean anything in context, but when you look at uh, qualified Dallas residents receive $67 and the U.S. average is 235 right. over a 15 year period. So that's not just like cherry picking yeah. dates and, and things like that. So why do you think that is and, and how do you think that pro this program is going to close that gap? Yeah, so uh, those numbers were um, pretty startling for some of the reasons that I mentioned, right? You don't, you wouldn't necessarily think that that problem would exist or that challenge would exist here. And so what makes those numbers even more compelling is that over 61% of all of the census tracts in Fort Worth are eligible, right? Wow. For financing. And they're like, we just didn't have um, wow. really the, the, the number of CDFIs in our community to service uh, the the need. And so, you know, uh, Fort Worth had um, really one uh, CDFI that was physically located here, two that were, um, you know, doing business in the area. So William Mann, um, the CDFI was, was here, uh, located in the Business Assistance Center on the Gwen campus, uh, and uh, People Fund um, was doing some, some loans but very low dollar amounts, right? And so um, when you compare that to the national average of $235 per person, we have a lot of ground to cover, right? And we certainly don't want um, to be behind <laughs> uh, the national average and, and, and uh, not our, our neighbor either. So we knew that there was opportunity. Uh, so we just set to work um, figuring out uh, speaking directly to potential stakeholders, potential uh, borrowers, and understanding um, that this could solve more than just uh, issues with entrepreneurs and small business owners, but this was more of an economic development uh, uh, solution, right? This is going to fuel an ecosystem of opportunity that's here in Fort Worth. So, you know, you, we can start with um, making sure that businesses, small businesses here have startup capital, have capital to scale their business and grow it, to sustain it through challenging times, um, which is another whole nother issue that a reason why we love CDFIs is because, you know, in challenging times like what we're seeing right now in the financial landscape, this is really where CDFIs do their best work. Right. right, where traditional lenders may have to, to pull back, uh, not because they don't want to, but because they, they may be required to, uh, for regulatory reasons, CDFIs can step out, right, and still be um, right there serving the needs, financial needs of the community. So when you look at um, the ability to service uh, small businesses, entrepreneurs, CDFIs can also provide bridge financing for economic development opportunities in revitalization areas. So where you have a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, um, um, projects like what's happening in Stop Six and, and uh, Como and Rosemont and, and all of the areas around the city that the city uh, of Fort Worth has invested um, money in, um, we can now step in and provide a little more financing through the CDFI friendly network uh, to close some of those gaps that may exist in financing. So you've got development projects, you've got small businesses, you've got um, consumer lending, uh, offering people an alternative to predatory payday uh, loans. Um, and you know when you talk about uh, early childhood and making sure that we have the highest quality early childhood. Maybe there are some child, child care facilities that want to upgrade and make sure that their um, physical plant is the best that it can be. CDFIs can step in and, and help do that. So there are a lot of ways that we can um, kind of make this mix work in Fort Worth. It doesn't just uh, start and end with small businesses. They're kind of the tip of the spear, but we're looking at this as a holistic solution.
Yeah, because you can get things like car loans and mortgage loans too, Yes, right? absolutely. And we have some really good stories to tell uh, about uh, in both of those areas. Um, we, you know, when we started out, like I said, we had about maybe three um, CDFIs that were actively uh, um, working in the Fort Worth market, a market of almost a million people, right? Um, and so when we started these conversations um, in, in January of this year, uh, that was what we started with, three. And now we have over 18 CDFIs actively wow. pursuing uh, over 200 uh, loan requests. And um, as of a couple, I, I haven't checked it this week, but uh, about two weeks ago, we had closed over, I think it was $7.6 million in loans. Um, so you're just getting started and you've we already haven't. got big numbers. <laughs> what, I mean, what exponential yeah. growth, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that just lets you know, like the, the soil was ripe. Yeah. Right? Like this is the perfect opportunity for us to kind of light the match mm -hmm. um, in the community here. And it's just taken off. And um, we're really excited to see what's going to happen once we get um, an executive director on board because this is a community led, community driven um, program. This is not sitting in any. Uh, government office. It's not in my department with the diversity and inclusion. It's not in economic development. This is out in the community, led by people in the community that are on the front lines of these type of lending opportunities. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations already, and, and you've still got a lot more to go. So how can a, a small business get involved and access these types of loans? Say I'm sitting at home and I've got an idea for a business, or maybe a bank yeah. has rejected me, but but I, I live in one of these areas, or I, I fit I fit the, the, the profile, I, yeah. I qualify for this. How do I get involved, and how do I learn more about this? Yeah, so you can go to the CDFI Friendly Fort Worth website, and there is a link where you can actually fill out an inquiry form, and uh, with all the, you know, like what your dreams are. Tell us what you want to, uh, to make happen. And then um, our team with CDFI Friendly Fort Worth and right now CDFI Friendly America will contact you and have a more in-depth conversation to get a little more detail and then connect you directly. Uh, if you're ready uh, to, to borrow right away, they'll make that connection for you. If there's an opportunity for you to kind of get ready, um, we will connect you with uh, one of our technical assistance partners um, that can make sure that you have everything that you need in order to be successful when we do send you directly to uh, a CDFI uh, to get that loan. That's great, that's great. What was that website again? CDFI Friendly Fort Worth. All right, very good. Hi, I'm Elise Dickerson, CEO and co-founder of EOSERA Inc. And we are hosting a pitch competition. We're in search of a female-led Texas-based company with the chops to make millions. The prize is $10,000. Find your application at empowhermentpitch.com. That's E-M-P-O-W-H-E-R-M-E-N-T-P-I-T-C-H.com. Applications close September 16th. Good luck. So I want to back up a second or, or kind of go a little higher on the org chart because you work in the in the City of Fort Worth Economic Development Department and the Department of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, what does that mean and, and how does that, what are some of the other things that you do in, in the city government? So I don't work in both departments. Oh, I, I, I lead the Department of Diversity and Inclusion. And for this particular part uh, project, we partnered with I see. the Department of Economic Development, um, which is led by Robert Stearns, um, which many people will recognize Everybody that Everybody knows name, Robert, that's right. Right, <laughs> he has, uh, his family has uh, a long history in Fort Worth city government doing amazing things. And so he is yes, uh, continuing to carry the torch. <laughs> that's great, but tell me more about what your office does. So our office, uh, our department. Department, um, sorry. <laughs> right, our department. <laughs> Uh, actually has three specific divisions. So we have our uh, business equity division, which is responsible for the um, oversight and enforcement of the city's uh, business equity ordinance. And we look at making sure that we have fairness in city contracts over $100,000. Uh, and um, we also support um, uh, building capacity of business equity firms in our marketplace. 
And uh, our other uh, division within our department is our Civil Rights Enforcement Division, uh, which uh, continues uh, to enforce the city's non-discrimination ordinance in fair housing, fair employment, public accommodations, ADA, and Title VI. Uh, ADA is Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, and then, last but not least, our, our newest division, which did not exist in any form or fashion um, prior to the creation of our department, is our Municipal Equity Division. And the Municipal Equity Division um, really uh, champions uh, the continuation of the work of the Race and Culture Task Force. Uh, many of you may remember that's actually why our department exists and why my position exists in the first place. We were one of, uh, or two of, uh, well, I guess it's one recommendation out of 22 recommendations in uh, seven key areas of uh, criminal justice, economic development, education, governance. Uh, that's where our recommendation for our department, um, health, housing, and transportation. And so our Municipal Equity Division continues to champion that work alongside our Human Relations Commission, which is currently reviewing the original recommendations which were submitted um, to Council back in 2018. Uh, yeah, 2018. Um, and so they're reviewing those, making sure that they are fresh and still applicable to where we are as a city today because you know, when you're adding 22,000 people every every year, you wanna make sure that you're keeping up with um, the needs of the current community. So they're refreshing um, those uh, recommendations right now. And then we're also um, finalizing the city's municipal equity plan, which looks at equity and municipal service delivery which impacts a lot of what we do with CDFIs, right? Uh, we look at municipal equity when it comes to economic development and, and um, small business support and uh, purchasing. So it all kind of works together really well. Uh, but that's just a snapshot of, of our department. So you got a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> that's sure. a lot to tackle. My goodness. Um, well, it, it sounds like uh, you know you're doing a lot of great work, and uh, and it, it makes sense to put all those things together. Yeah. I'm sure they were kind of all across the city. Mm -hmm. it makes sense to put all those things together. Uh, so I want to fast forward a little bit. I know you're just getting going on CDFI Fort Worth, mm -hmm. but where do you think this goes? What does this look yeah. like in the next three years, five years, maybe ten yeah. years down the road? Yeah. So the goal is to hit at least 250 million in um, new financing wow. in unserved markets here um, in Fort Worth. And so we're gonna give ourselves a few years to hit that number, um, but what it looks like right now, we're well on our way. Like I said, we've already done about uh, 7.6 million um, in, in loans, uh, completed loans um, here in Fort Worth market. And those are really kind of the, the small loans. So now we're starting to see some of the larger projects come through the pipeline, those economic development loans, um, which you know can be anywhere from 10 to $40 million. And so we're hoping that you know once we start to see some of those uh, larger loans close um, in specific uh, revitalization target areas in Fort Worth, then we'll be a little bit closer to our $250 million goal. That's great. That's, a, that's an ambitious goal, but it is. you're off to a great start. It's ambitious, uh, aggressive, but I think doable. There you go. <laughs> so I want to go back a little bit because I know you, we stole you from South Bend yeah. where you worked for Mayor Pete. This is Pete Buttigieg, the guy who ran for president and did really, really well, got really far in the process. Yeah. Uh, now Secretary of Transportation, is that he right? Is. He is. So what was it like working for Mayor Pete and having a front row seat to that whole <laughs> that whole thing? Um, awesome, in a word. Uh, there is, um, you know, any time that you are working in municipal government, the best that you can hope for is that you work for a really authentic um, leader that um, thinks critically, is compassionate, understands the needs of people in the community. And um, I have been lucky enough to have two stints like that. And Pete was, was my first. And so, uh, he set the bar really high and, and uh, lucky for me, Fort Worth is, is right there, <laughs> right there with them, so. Very good, well, that's great. Well, we're glad you're here. Thank so. you, I'm glad to be here. <laughs>
So the question, Christina, we always ask at the end of the show is, who is your favorite innovator in Fort Worth? Oh gosh, my favorite innovator in Fort Worth. Um, there are so many people that are doing amazing things. Um, and I have to, I mean, I, this, this may sound uh, a little, um, well, I, I'm just gonna say, I think that some of the work that we're doing um, on the front lines of uh, innovation when it comes to uh, the financing angle and the f what I didn't explain uh, about the CDFI process is we are really trying to tie um, the CRA or Community Reinvestment Act requirements of uh, some of our traditional lenders to opportunities with CDFIs. So we are creating a list of all the available opportunities um, for that meet CRA requirements and making those available to our large uh, uh, traditional lenders so that they can have an immediate impact. Because a lot of what we uh, were seeing is that uh, banks wanna participate in, in um, uh, making sure that we're creating a, a stable economy here in Fort Worth, but they don't always know where the best place to do that. And so if we're providing them a list of, hey, these are all the areas that Fort Worth as a city is trying to invest and revitalize, it would be great if you could partner with us and create public-private partnerships um, to make sure that every area in Fort Worth is seeing the kind of economic success that uh, there's pockets uh, happening in, in Fort Worth. And so I think I would have to say that's probably my favorite innovation in Fort Worth right now. That's great. Well, that's why we had you on the show because <laughs> we think the same thing. Well, Christina, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about CDFI Friendly Fort Worth, please visit cdfifriendlyfortworth.org. That's CDFI friendlyfortworth.org. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and be sure to leave us a review. If you want to join the conversation, follow us on social media at HSC Innovates. Be sure to also join our Innovate Fort Worth podcast Facebook group. Stay up to date with the latest business news by subscribing to the Business Report. Brought to you by the Fort Worth Report Business Reporting Staff, this new weekly digest from the Fort Worth Report brings you the latest economic news, examines the stories behind the statistics, and helps you find new opportunities in our booming market. And best of all, it's free of charge. Subscribe to the Business Report by visiting fortworthreport.org slash newsletter. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers, our technical producer is Rob Upchurch, and our digital editors are Matt Havlick and Summerlee Sherlock. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork. <laughs>